Hi, good morning. It's Gene from the Mad Star Observatory. Guys, in the video, uh, we're going to talk about atmospheric gases and just compare, you know, CO2 to other gases. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, types of radiation that directly affect us and put that into perspective with, you know, all the other gases in our atmosphere. Uh, before we do, I uh, just want to say thank you to the patrons that have supported us, Doug this month and Bob and Kathy and Jenny, um, you know, big thanks for you for doing that fundraiser for us and all you people that have supported us um, on PayPal. You know, I don't want to forget anybody, uh, you know, that has uh, put a little bit of help to keep things going here at the observatory. Uh, if you followed us this year, you'll know we've taken on a lot more uh, than we ever have done. You know, a year ago, we just had the TriMag system. Uh, this year, we've added a magnetosphere sensor uh, to mo monitor the um, magnetosphere uh, strength, which protects us from cosmic radiation. We've also added, uh, in different locations of this world, magnetometers to measure the intensity of those regions. And we've also, uh, this month, added an atmospheric oxygen uh, sensor. We're also going to add... Um, because of the hype with regards to CO2 in the atmosphere, we're going to add a CO2 um, parts per million uh, counter so we can find out you know, just exactly how serious 400 parts per million, which is said to be in our uh, atmosphere right now. So, you know, we're going to uh, be talking about those things in this video. So, um, you know, if you can, guys, just give us a little push uh, towards the end of the month and let's see if we can do a little bit better than what we did last month um, with regards to raising the funds as you can see you know we're definitely um, you know uh, setting ourselves uh, amongst the others with the amount of equipment now that we're using we've got barometric pressures temperature sensors trimag system magnetometers in different locations of the world we've got muon detectors which not a lot of observatories have, but we're using the same state-of-the-art technology as what NASA and the European Space Agency are using. We've got with this latest addition, the atmospheric oxygen sensor, there isn't another um, more sophisticated sensor on the market than that one that we're using. And we're also ordering from the same company now a CO2 sensor, which is in the same calibre as the oxygen sensor. So, you know, we are doing covering quite a lot so if we could get a little bit of support from you guys out there that'd be great and you know there's probably about 300 people 200 of those nearly are patrons and you know there's probably about another 50 people that might contribute uh, a small amount of money on here so you know if we can just do that little bit more guys we can you know balance out uh, what we're spending and the time we're investing and you know at the end of the day guys you've got yourselves an independent scientist and an independent observatory giving you the truth on what things are. And I think, you know, beans is this hype with CO2. Uh, you know, I think we should, you know, add that to our observatory just to monitor it. What I want to do is take some readings in an enclosed environment like the living room when there's a couple of people in there and then compare it to how many parts per million are outside. I already know, guys, that, you know, in the living room, um, atmospheric carbon dioxide can go up to you know 1500 parts per million i already know that if you're on a train the uh, parts per million of co2 can go up to 2000 so and if you're in a car it can reach you know two and a half thousand parts per million so you know when you put this into perspective if you're in your living room and it's nearly at 2000 parts per million when there's a few people in the room with you and then you leave your front door and there's only 400 parts per million then obviously there's nothing to really be afraid because the outside atmospheric carbon dioxide is a lot lower and you know it should be uh, the case because if we look at what uh, the chart we're looking at we can see that the majority of gases in our atmosphere are oxygen at 21 percent and nitrogen at 78 percent the other one percent uh, is mainly argon and the 0.1% of the rest is not just CO2 like this chart shows. It's CO2, it's um, H2O, uh, argon, xenon, krypton, radon gas, all the other trace elements. They're called trace elements. So they're almost not important. 
The other thing to remember is is that when CO2 levels drop to 200 parts per million, it starts to affect the growth of um, you know uh, plant lives and everything else on our planet. When they're up above 200 percent, sorry, up above 200 parts per million, they thrive a lot more. And in turn, you know, they give us something back. They take the CO2 out of the atmosphere. They also give us oxygen. And that's not a bad trade, guys. But when you look at this and put it all into perspective, you can clearly see that CO2 in the atmosphere is not really a cause of anything to be concerned of. But our organisations have discovered a way of creating wealth out of CO2 taxes. And, you know, they've even to this point uh, corrupted data that's been collected they have corrupted the scientists that are responsible for pr providing the data and what we've got now is politicians telling scientists not just about their findings but telling them exactly what to find for their benefit so that they continue to tax everybody but you know guys most of you um, don't come from China that observe and watch this uh, channel and visit my website. Most of you come from these Western worlds like Australia, um, New Zealand, Europe, uh, the UK, Ireland, uh, Canada, America, uh, Brazil. You know, and you know what? We're not the most prolific polluters of CO2. It comes mostly from these countries like India, Pakistan, uh, China and all those other countries that are creating probably uh, one coal burning power plant every month they're bringing online and you know it doesn't make no difference how much we save here in the UK or in the United States or Canada uh, with regards to this carbon going into the atmosphere you know if we're going to do our best and drop even our emissions to zero that doesn't stop these other countries doing that. We've had, I believe it was the Indian president come out and say, you know, when my people live as qu a good a quality of life as your people, then we'll consider, you know, cutting down on carbon dioxide. So clearly there is no uh, drive for these countries to even reduce their emissions. So we can do what we want, but they're still going to carry on. And in any case, what does it do? when we are taxed actually by the governments in this western world like the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, European countries what good are they going to do with the money? How are they going to stop carbon going into the atmosphere? They can't. How are they going to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? They can't. The thing is there's a natural process taking place and you know it has been the case for millions of years on this planet. You know, we had millions of years ago on this planet an atmosphere of almost 80, 90% carbon dioxide. If you go further back than that, it was mainly all carbon dioxide. But life was thriving. And, you know, if we go back millions of years, we'll see that when carbon dioxide levels was high, very high, then, you know, we also see that there was... a explosion of life taking place on this planet so you know if we have added an extra 200 parts per million to the atmosphere of a trace gas then that's it's not even worth talking about but you know we are never going to see a challenge to the government with respect to delivering scientific truth and facts we're not going to see any of these people like Al Gore go before a court and be prosecuted or tried for misleading the world in what they have said and we're never going to recover the money of the trillions of pounds that the governments around the world have already taxed people we have been fleeced guys as a result of this carbon dioxide um, hysteria caused by these climate alarmists and it is a very very sad day you know until the record is cleaned and the truth comes out and there is you know there's more than an abundant amount of evidence out there to challenge these clowns that are driving you know uh, carbon dioxide as causing damage to the atmosphere in turn driving climate then things are never going to change you know people really need to be held account 
for the crimes that they've committed on a global scale and you know until that happens we don't move forward the only thing we can do is what we're doing right now if we want answers to anything as you can guess we've got to go out there and find them ourselves that's why we at the observatory built the trimag system to track the magnetic north pole because organizations like the european space agency built the swarm mission a few years ago now and classified the data after level two yeah it was taxpayers money that built the satellites and got them into space and paid for them to be built in the first place and we got left with nothing level two data can't get it it's the same with everything else guys you know nasa don't come out and tell us that from recent satellite photos that they see the earth is looking greener from air to space as a result probably of the extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere but there's a there's a clear drive to you know mislead people and continue you know the corruption of making money out of something that is not the case you know we're in a lot of trouble really when you think about it and the only way we can find any light in this darkness is by finding out ourselves guys is by putting the equipment down there and letting it do its job and collect the data and honestly you know release the data to the public that's what we do at this observatory the reason why we use a lot of electronics to do this is because electronics are simply more accurate than human beings at doing these experiments i showed you in the other video the other day that you know if we use um you know uh, graduated test tubes with you know mills on the side and we put a little bit of wire wool in there you know there's always an uncertainty in, in that in that way of calculating atmospheric oxygen as we found out you know when we was doing these tests we always found that it come up just short of 20 percent whereas with this high-tech you know oxygen sensor that we've got now it'll do this you know every second it will take a, a reading of the atmospheric gas it will take a temperature reading it will take a barometric pressure reading it will take uh, oxygen pressure reading every second and give us the data and it'll do that job every second of the day day and night 365 days a year and you know it will record it onto an sd card we can process the data off the sd card upload it onto the website and people will see exactly how much oxygen over the year has been added or taken away or has left uh you know at equilibrium in the oxygen reservoir in our atmosphere it's the only way to do it you can t you could you could rely on NASA to give you that information, but I think NASA are slowly losing the credibility, and it's a shame because I had a lot of respect years ago for NASA, and you know people that worked at NASA as well had a lot of respect for the company that they was working for, and they were very proud of it. And now what we've got is scientists that are former workers for NASA complaining to NASA about all this business with relationship to co2 and just how much they're overlooking to drive their case in favor of this causing changes to our world it's all about money guys and you know that so um the only other thing i wanted to add is that of radiation levels 14 percent of the total radiation that comes into our atmosphere is via cosmic radiation and as we know, this has increased eightfold um, in the recent years as the um, grand solar minimum has gradually crept in over the last 33 years. You know, every year, every, sorry, every solar cycle, every 11 years, we've had an increase in cosmic radiation as a result of two things. The heliosphere shrinking because of the low solar output and the magnetosphere weakening by 20%. Both of these protect us from cosmic radiation and both of these allow more cos cosmic radiation in when they deplete in strength. So we do have a problem, but on, the good, on, on, on a good note, we are monitoring it, guys. We've got muon detectors, which detects muons, which are a byproduct of cosmic collisions 
in the upper atmosphere with other air molecules. And when muons are on the increase, it tells us that cosmic radiation is also on the increase. So we have got that covered. And in January, two of our sensors, along with some other equipment, will be going out, one to the uh, South Atlantic anomaly and one to one of the highest magnetic regions on this planet, South, Cal uh, sorry, South Australia um, Central. So, you know, we're doing everything we can to effort those questions that you guys are asking and just find out exactly, you know, what threats that we face with results to these changes that are taking place. And we have to take notice of them, guys. I know some people think, oh, you go on a lot, Gene, about this, but, you know, I can't emphasise the fact that the pole shift is such a rare event that the almost, um, you know, the last time it happened, let's just put it this way, it was 780,000 years ago. That's nearly three quarters of a million years ago. And it's a half a million years overdue on its natural cycle. Every 300,000 years or thereabouts, it used to go for a reverse, and it's back on our doorstep, guys. There's no doubt in that. Even the organisations will agree that we are experiencing a magnetic reversal on this planet. At the same time, we couldn't face anything worse than the low solar output that we've got as well. So both of these, like I've said, allow more cosmic radiation in, and you know that is why we've chosen to, at this observatory, monitor those things, as well as some other things as well. I think the more we can add to the observatory, the better job we do, and the more answers we can give you guys. And we've got a good website backing up this YouTube channel. And we've got a good crowd of people that are always willing to help. You know, um, Terry Moore, you know, thanks for the email that you sent me. Um, I will respond to it. Uh, it was quite a read. And, you know, I can only, um, you know, say well done for the efforts that you've put in up to this date. You know, it's um, and I always read your comments. And I always read everybody's comments. Um, Cameron, uh, like, like so, I'll be getting back in touch with you. I know you've offered your... Uh, skill set uh, to the observatory so I'll get back in touch with you and we'll see whether we can um, you know share some of the work with you and uh, you know we'll work out something in any case so you know guys it really is um, you know a big effort you know we've got people around the world that are helping us collect the data from the stations that we've sent and we've got you know some great people that support all our efforts that we do at the observatory you know at the end of the day we haven't to date barred anyone from the information that we've gathered and we get a lot of information now as you guys know we're monitoring so much these days and we'll continue to do that as well and add more things to our observatory and answer more questions for you but you know in order to keep things going we need to you know keep the uh, crowdfunding going guys so you know if you can support what we do there's a link down there and I can tell you this, guys, there's a lot worse things you can do than support a scientific observatory that's doing the right thing. So I'm going to leave it with that. There's a link down there if you want to support us. And, you know, that's great if you can. And I'll say what I usually do. Have a great week, and I'll catch up with you at some other point. As always, bye for now.